Uh, we're going to talk about celiac disease in this video. Uh, celiac disease also is known as gluten uh, sensitive enteropathy. Sensitive enteropathy. Um, it's also sometimes referred to as celiac sprue. So what is a celiac disease? Well what happens is this is actually a hereditary uh, immune response uh, to gliadin the gliadin component of gluten. Um, this is a protein that's found in uh, in wheat and other uh, similar uh, types of food like rye and barley and what happens is people who have celiac disease are uh, sensitive to this. What happens is when they die, eat anything that has uh, wheat or rye or barley um, the fact that their body is sensitive to that protein causes a, a very significant uh, reaction. It causes inflammation in their small bowel. So if you remember the small bowel is your duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Uh, I can just write it out. Duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Now that inflammation uh, eventually causes uh, the uh, mucosa mucosa to atrophy and uh, I'll draw a little diagram uh, to kind of illustrate really quickly um, normally if this is the lining of the uh, mucosa of, uh, of the bowel there's these little villi these things that I drew here are called villi these uh, are, res are responsible or aid in uh, absorption uh, you know if this is like the food particles they almost like you can kind of think of them as arms or hands that kind of grab the food. Well, in celiac disease, these villi, they they flatten out. So it's called a villus atrophy. And that villus atrophy happens in celiac disease uh, because of the um, sensitivity to gluten. Um, and that obviously uh, can uh, cause major problems as because it, it, it leads to uh, malabsorption instead of the small bowel being able to absorb the nutrients like it normally does it's not able to anymore so the symptoms uh, of celiac uh, disease are really just think malabsorption I mean instead of just memorizing the symptoms kind of think about what can happen um, to a child or to an adult who has celiac disease uh, because of this malabsorption well children um, because they're growing if they're not getting the nutrients they're not able to absorb the nutrients uh, nor like they normally should they'll present with failure to thrive adults um, can have uh, weight loss um, they can also have anemia they can also present with uh, steatorrhea which is a type of diarrhea that happens when you can't digest fat you can also have uh, specific vitamin deficiencies uh, the vitamin deficiencies are uh, quite a few. I'll just list uh, some of them. Iron, folate, uh, vitamin D, and calcium. So the fact that uh, the nutrients are not being absorbed in the small intestine are pretty uh, significant. Um, other than those symptoms, there's one characteristic physical exam finding that I really wanted to talk about because it's tested a lot on uh, uh, licensing exams. It's a rash that's uh, associated with celiac disease, and I've seen this uh, on licensing exams. And that rash is very famous. It's called dermatitis herpetiformis. And dermatitis herpetiformis is a uh, very itchy, pruritic, vesicular rash that can happen on your elbows and the knees and I'll show you a picture of it it's right here um, this is a, a mild case of it there's much more uh, severe cases but sometimes what they'll show is just a picture of the rash and they'll ask you what disease is it they may they won't even talk about dermatitis or piriformis they just want you to associate the rash with the disease so that, that's very important all right, now let's we get into the diagnosis. Now, the diagnosis of celiac disease, other than the history, is is it's a it's a relatively challenging diagnosis, but it's usually uh, accomplished by doing a small bowel biopsy. So, 
the small bowel uh, is biopsied and what you're really looking for when you take a piece of the small bowel is the villus atrophy and this can be detected uh, um, under a microscope when the biopsy sample is uh, uh, looked at more carefully and uh, I just wanted to show you um, a very very big this is the small intestine right here and what they've done is they've taken a small portion and they've blown it up so this is the normal intestine here you can see those villi those tall little uh, branches or they kind of look like fingers and they're responsible for uh, grabbing the food and helping with absorption now look at the celiac disease you can notice that those villi have clearly flattened out and that's an example of villus atrophy so that's what you're looking at under the microscope when you do a small bowel biopsy um, there's the tumor markers these will be on the licensing exams there's two of them anti-tissue transglutaminase antibody also sometimes abbreviated AGA and the next one is this one for sure I've seen endomesial endomesial antibody and these are uh, serologic markers also abbreviated EMA uh, these are serologic markers that can be uh, detected in a person with celiac disease and in addition to these things um, the labs will also show uh, nutritional deficiencies when you do the basic labs they will show iron deficiency um, they can also show um, it's, I mean, a lot of it is, is, like I said, don't memorize this. I mean, just kind of think about it. The patient isn't able to absorb the nutrients. So iron deficiency, the person may have anemia because um, they may have, uh, well, iron deficiency or folate deficiency. They also may have deficiencies of calcium and vitamin D. Okay, so finally we get to the treatment. How do you treat this? Well, the famous way that... Um, you'll definitely need to remember as a gluten-free diet basically what that means is the patient has to avoid food that has gluten in it and that may seem extremely challenging and it is because you have to avoid any food that has gluten so that includes uh, wheat that includes uh, rye barley as, as you can imagine patients are given a, a, a list of food uh, to uh, sort of carry around and um, by their gastroenterologist and um, that can um, help them t to um, choose which foods they can eat and which foods they should avoid um, in addition to the gluten-free diet which is sort of the the main um, component of the treatment they also will get supplementary vitamins and those supplementary vitamins and minerals are essentially the ones that they are uh, deficient in so iron folate and calcium and whatever else they're deficient in now uh, finally I've got a couple of vignettes and um, here they are a 33 year old man presents with weight loss diarrhea and flatulence jejunal biopsy demonstrates marked atrophy of villi the patient's condition may improve with the removal of which of the following from the diet. This is a nice little vignette um, that completely summarizes celiac disease. Um, and of course, uh, you're, well, you want to avoid gluten, but gluten isn't mentioned here. But what is gluten contained in? Well, it's contained in wheat, barley, and uh, rye, and wheat is listed. And the final one a patient complains of crampy abdominal pain, diarrhea, fatigue, and weight loss over the past 12 months. Each day, she passes four to five loose, malodorous stools that's diarrhea that float in the toilet fecal fat content is increased a biopsy of the duodenal mucosa reveals loss of villi and intraepithelial lymphocytic infiltration smooth muscle layers appear normal which of the following is most likely diagnosis well again this is another nice uh, clinical vignette that uh, summarizes celiac disease and sometimes also known as celiac sprue